was agent and I worked on long-term recovery and to this day I'm still living with a disability. And I really wanted to share this topic with you guys because most of you know I have a disability, but I don't think many of you know the whole backstory behind it, so I really wanted to share with you my full story. So I was diagnosed with acute flaccid myelitis or AFM and it's where a virus attacks the spinal cord. I was actually diagnosed with transverse myelitis in the beginning, but last year my diagnosis was changed to AFM because nobody knew what AFM was until fairly recently. AFM has a really unique pattern of damage um, with the spinal cord. Um, on the diagram on the left, this shows the four sections of the spinal cord, the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. I have damage from cervical two, or C2, to T1, or thoracic one, as you can see on the diagram, which is a really large section of the spinal cord to be damaged. And typically, when you have damage higher up on your spinal cord, everything below that is affected. And as you can see, that's not really the case with me. I have really spotty paralysis. Um, and the reason for this is uh, on the diagram on the right, it shows the gray and white matter, um, and that's a cross section of the spinal cord. The gray matter is the butterfly shape in the middle and the white matter surrounding the gray matter. And the gray matter is made up of uh, the cell bodies and synapses and dendrites of neurons, whereas the white matter is made up of myelinated axons. And within the gray matter, there are lower motor neurons, uh, which is one type of motor neuron. And my lower motor neurons were damaged when the virus attacked my spinal cord in the gray matter. The other type of motor neurons um, is the upper motor neuron. And as you can see in the diagram in the middle, the upper motor neurons live within the uh, cerebral cortex of the brain, and they branch out from the brain to the spinal cord, where they connect to the lower motor neuron, which leads from the spinal cord out to the muscle. And so that's why I have flaccid paralysis, because my muscle is just hanging limp since there's no signals reaching the muscle. There are very few treatment options for AFM currently because it's such a new disorder but I was lucky enough to receive plasmapheresis, which is shown by the machine on the left. It's where they take the plasma out of your body and replace it with new plasma in order to give you antibodies that are healthy. And this is what really helped me regain motion in my legs back because um, as you may have been thinking, it's odd that I lost motion in my arms first and then my legs, it just seems kind of backwards. And that's because the virus actually caused the damage that hurt my arms, whereas my body then had an autoimmune reaction to the virus attacking my spinal cord, which is what hurt my legs. And that's why giving my body healthy antibodies helped me regain leg function. And then on the right, this is IVIG, which stands for intravenous immunoglobulin. An immunoglobulin is an antibody that would help you fight off a virus. So this often helps patients with AFM to help the virus so that they don't have as much damage on their spinal cord. So as I said before, AFM is a really new disorder um, and currently the CDC is only counting cases since 2014 because that's when AFM actually got its name and when it started becoming more prevalent. So this is a problem because my case is actually not counted by the CDC. And so there's not going to be enough research because CDC won't know that there's actually way more cases of AFM. And so I'm really advocating for the CDC to count all the cases uh, because as you can see, um, starting in August 2014, there was a spike in cases and then every other year uh, there's a big spike in cases, which is a really similar pattern to polio. Um, AFM is actually termed modern polio. It's just caused by what they think is probably a respiratory virus or a cold, um, that's, which is similar to how um, polio was caused. And as my doctor said, Dr. Greenberg, who's an expert on AFM, uh, if we don't do something about AFM, 
really soon it could become as prevalent as polio. So I encourage you all to help me raise awareness so that we can help so many kids who are being diagnosed with AFM and who are having their lives changed instantly like mine was.